In this lesson, we're going to learn how to multiply and divide fractions, and we're going to extend these ideas into working with mixed numbers. Now, you might already have some strategies for multiplying fractions by integers, by whole numbers. For example, a half times six is actually the same as finding a half of six. Of and the time sign can often be interchanged quite readily. So a half of six is six divided by two, which is three. So a half times six is three. Similarly, imagine we're trying to find a quarter times eight. That's the same as a quarter of eight. And to find a quarter, we divide by four. So that's eight divided by four, which is equal to two. And of course, yeah, we could do this every time, but it does start to get quite tricky when we move on to multiplying two fractions. For instance, let's say we want to find a half times three fifths. How would we go about that? Well, one technique is to think about this in terms of a diagram. We know it's the same as finding a half of three fifths. To represent three fifths, we find a shape and we split it into five equally sized pieces. And then we shade three of these. Then to find a half of this, we're going to split this shape exactly down the middle and shade one half. Now we see that on the overlap of our two fractions, we have three sections, but this is now out of a total of 10. So three tenths of the shape is equal to a half times three fifths. But can you see how else we could have calculated this? If we just consider the denominator, we see that that's the total number of pieces we have on our diagram. And we can find that by multiplying two, that's the width, by the height, which is five. Two times five is 10. So in fact, the denominator to our answer comes from multiplying the two denominators. And then our numerator is three. This time that's one times three, and we see that actually that's the same as multiplying the numerators in our question. And so we can generalize this, and we can say that to multiply two fractions, we simply multiply their numerators and then separately multiply their denominators. So four sevenths times two thirds, well, the numerator will be four times two, which is eight, and then the denominator is seven times three, which is 21. Note also that if we want to use this process to multiply an integer, a whole number by a fraction, such as say six times a fifth, we write six as six over one, it's six wholes, and then we go from there. Six times one is six, and then we multiply the bottom numbers, the denominators, one times five is five. It's also worth bearing in mind that there is a technique that isn't entirely necessary, but that can make more complicated multiplications a little bit simpler, and this is called cross-canceling. Let's consider, say, three-tenths times five-sixths. Of course, we could multiply the numerators, three times five is 15, and then multiply the denominators, 10 times six is 60. But then we'd need to simplify this fraction. To save us this rather nasty last step, what we do is we cross cancel. We look diagonally across our sum and look for any common factors. So we see that both 10 and five are divisible by five. Five divided by five is one and 10 divided by five is two. And then we do that in the other direction. We look at three and six, and we know that we can divide both of these by three. Three divided by three is one, and six divided by three is two. Once we've done that, the next process is the same. We just multiply the numerators, one times one is one, and then we multiply the denominators. Two times two is four. So three tenths times five sixths is equal to one quarter. Now, it's important to realize that the process is identical if we're multiplying mixed numbers, but only once we've written those numbers as improper fractions. For example, say we have one and a quarter multiplied by one and five sevenths. We'd begin by writing one and a quarter and one and five sevenths as improper top heavy fractions. So one and a quarter, to achieve that, we do one times four, that's the integer multiplied by the denominator, and we get four. And then we add that to the numerator part of the fractional part, so four plus one is five. The denominator remains unchanged, and so one and a quarter, as a top heavy or improper fraction, is five quarters. Let's do this again for one and five sevenths. 
We multiply the whole number part by the denominator of the fractional bit, so that's 1 times 7, which is 7. And then we add that to the numerator part of our fraction. 7 add 5 is 12. The denominator remains unchanged, and so 1 and 5 sevenths must be equal to 12 sevenths. And so we see that 1 and a quarter times 1 and 5 sevenths must be equal to 5 quarters times 12 sevenths. And then remember, we have two ways to work this out. We could multiply the numerators, 5 times 12 is 60, then multiply the denominators, 4 times 7 is 28, and then we can simplify by dividing through by 4. 60 divided by 4 is 15, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. Notice also that we could have cross-cancelled. If we look diagonally, we see that both 12 and 4 are divisible by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. And so we could go straight to the final step by multiplying the numerators, so 5 times 3 to give us 15, and then the denominators. 1 times 7 is 7. Now, of course, since the question was given to us as two mixed numbers, we need to change 15 sevenths, the improper fraction, back into a mixed number. To do this, we divide 15 by 7, which is 2 with a remainder of 1. And so 2 is the integer part, the whole number part, and we have 1 left over. But of course, we've got 15 sevenths, so we must have 1 seventh left over. And so 1 and a quarter times 1 and 5 sevenths is equal to 2 and 1 seventh. And so now we've gone through the basics of multiplying fractions and mixed numbers, it's your turn to give this a go. Have a look at the Fractions Lesson 3 Multiplying and Dividing Fractions Lesson Pack. There are two worksheets to look through. The first is called Multiplying Fractions Activity Sheet, and then the second is Multiplying Mixed Numbers Fractions Activity Sheet. You don't have to do every single question on both of those worksheets, but you should certainly start with the Multiplying Fractions Activity Sheet and spend six or seven minutes on that, and then move on to the Mixed Number Fractions Activity Sheet and see how many of those you can get done in about the same time. Make sure you mark your work and pause the video now and we'll see you back here in about 15 minutes. Welcome back, and we're now going to look at how we can divide fractions, and you may have some techniques for that already, but let's see what we can do. We begin by looking at an example. Let's consider three fifths divided by one fifth. And to work this out, we're going to begin by drawing a diagram. The shaded area in this diagram represents three fifths. And when we talk about dividing, we're really talking about sharing. And so we want to divide the shaded part of our fraction into lots of one-fifth. We have one one-fifth here, another one-fifth here, and then a third one-fifth here. And so when we divide three-fifths by one-fifth, we simply get three. Now, in fact, this is probably fairly obvious. If we've got three-fifths and we want to divide it by one-fifth, because the pieces are the same size, we can simply think about the numerators and divide three by one. And so what would happen if we want to divide three-fifths by a quarter? These don't have the same denominator, but we can create a common denominator. We're going to find the lowest common multiple of five and four. In other words, the smallest number in both these times table. Well, the smallest number in both the five and four times tables is 20. And so we rewrite our sum using equivalent fractions. Let's think about three-fifths. To get from 5 to 20, we'd multiply by 4. So we have to do the same to the numerator to create that equivalent fraction. 3 times 4 is 12, and so three-fifths must be equivalent to 12 twentieths. We're now going to repeat this process with the second fraction. We'd have to multiply 4 by 5 to get 20. And so let's do the same to the numerator. 1 times 5 is 5, so a quarter is equal to 5 twentieths. And now the denominators of these fractions are equal, we can divide by simply dividing the numerators. That's 12 divided by 5, which of course can be written as a fraction. And so 3 fifths divided by a quarter is equal to 12 fifths, or 2 and 2 fifths. So to generalise, one method that we have for dividing fractions is to create equivalent fractions with a common denominator and then simply divide the numerators. Now, this is a really lovely method, as it really shows us what's happening, but you may have heard an alternative method. 
Now, this method is more process than real understanding, and it's sometimes called keep change flip. But what we do to divide two fractions is we multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal, that's one over, of the second fraction. When we already have a fraction, its reciprocal is found by essentially switching the numerator and the denominator. So if we want to use this method, we multiply three fifths by four over one. And of course we know how to multiply fractions. We multiply the top numbers, three times four is 12, and then we multiply the denominators. Five times one is five. Now, of course, either method is absolutely fine. It's very much personal preference. Let's see how we could apply both of these methods to dividing mixed numbers. Take, for instance, two and one third divided by three quarters. We can't do anything at all until we change two and one thirds into a top heavy or improper fraction. And so we multiply the two by the three to give us six and then add the one to give us seven. And we keep the denominator the same. So two and one thirds is equal to seven thirds. And so we need to work out seven thirds divided by three quarters. We've seen that one technique we have is to create a common denominator. And the lowest common multiple of three and four is 12. We'll need to multiply the numerator and denominator of our first fraction by four to achieve this. Three times four is 12. So seven times four is 28. Then we need to multiply the numerator and denominator of our second fraction by three, and three times three is nine. Once the denominators are the same, we simply divide the numerators, and we can write this in fraction form, is 28 ninths. But of course, we also know that we can do this by multiplying seven thirds by the reciprocal of three quarters, that's four thirds. And then we multiply the numerators to give us the 28, and the denominators to give us the nine. Of course, whatever technique we use, we do have to change 28 ninths back into a mixed number. So we ask ourselves, how many nines make 28? Well, that's three with a remainder of one, and we keep the denominator the same. So two and one thirds divided by three quarters is three and one ninth. And so now we've considered a couple of techniques and a few examples, it's your turn. You're going to go back to the earlier lesson pack, but this time you're going to work through the two dividing fractions worksheets. The first is the dividing fractions activity sheet, and then the second is the dividing mixed number fractions activity sheet. As before, you do not need to complete every single question on both sheets. You should see how many you can achieve roughly in about six or seven minutes for each sheet. Make sure you mark them when you're finished, and we'll see you back here in about 15 minutes. Welcome back. So we're going to look at how we can combine everything we've looked at in this video with one final wordy question. Jenny feeds her dog three fifths of a tin of dog food at each meal. The dog eats two meals per day. If Jenny has 30 tins of dog food, after how many days will she run out of tins? So we're told that she feeds her dog three fifths of a tin of dog food each meal, but that the dog eats two meals per day. So we're going to begin by working out how much dog food the dog consumes each day. The calculation we're going to do is three fifths times two. We need to multiply the amount it eats at one meal by the number of meals per day. Now, of course, if we're multiplying a fraction by an integer, by a whole number, we write it over one. So two is two over one. We now know that to multiply two fractions, we multiply the numerators together and then separately multiply the denominators. Three times two is six and five times one is five. And so the dog eats six fifths of a tin per day. Now, in fact, this is a little bit over a tin, although we're going to leave it as an improper fraction for now to make the next calculation easier. The next piece of information we have is that Jenny has 30 tins of dog food. We need to work out the number of days that all these tins will last for. And so now we're going to divide the number of tins she has by the number of tins the dog eats per day. That's 30 divided by 6 fifths, or 30 over 1 divided by 6 fifths. Of course, we saw we have two methods for division. We can create a common denominator, 
or multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second. Let's use that second method. We're going to multiply 30 over 1 by the reciprocal by 5 over 6. And remember, of course, we can look for common factors by cross-cancelling. If we've got 30 and 6, we can divide both of them by 6. 30 divided by 6 is 5, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. And so the sum that we're now going to do is 5 times 5, which is 25, over 1 times 1, which is 1. But of course, 25 wholes, or 25 over 1, is simply the same as 25. And so we see that the tins of dog food will last her 25 days. And after the 25th day, Jenny will run out of dog food. So we've covered multiplying and dividing fractions and mixed numbers, and we've even looked at a worded question. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you back here very soon.